yeah, Tub did post a new video. I, I'm pretty confident I'm going to know all of these. Let's see. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't want spoilers. I don't want spoilers. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about YouTube. You in the chat, Tub? Your careers in seconds. There are a lot. And I'd like to make this a series probably gonna see a part two coming in the future but there are a lot of og youtubers that i forgot existed and i just remember wow they did something horrible but i know i'm like mr long intro i'm sorry about that i'll make this one short oh you don't need to apologize for that it's that new music video coming out october 3rd yes you guys finally don't have to listen to cherry soda on repeat anymore i got you guys with a new Thanks music to video spotify Apple cupcake music, all of that yeah october 3rd be there for the live premiere it'll be on this channel it's gonna be so fun with the live chat and everything i'm thinking november the ep will be out and that ep will have music videos to every single song and that'll be like a 30 minute video that's the way to do it music video per song guys up but Let's Shit's get started hype. with our list. Vitaly ZD TV. Vit so Vitaly, he, uh, this guy fell on some fucking wild times. Pretty sure it was a crippling drug addiction. And then he snapped one day, jumped out of a moving vehicle and beat a random woman. I'm going off memory here, but I'm almost positive that's what it was. Vitaly Zadorovetsky, also known as Vitaly ZDTV, was once yeah, the bang bro, the uh, for hilarious bang bus, pranks bang bros with funny guy, original concepts was. at the time, such as gold digger pranks, Russian hitman pranks, in the hood pranks, and who could forget classics such as how to get girls to kiss you, getting girls panties, yeah, and the classics, can I eat your booty? The channel now sits at 10 million subscribers and over 1 billion video views, though his recent uploads don't match that of a 10 million follower channel. So what happened? If we want to understand the fall of a man who was once getting a minimum of 20 million views per video we have to go to the very beginning before he was even a prankster on youtube let's go back to when vitaly was 18 bang bus a russian friend of his called him up and told him he can make easy money if he just appeared in an adult video being broke and living with his mom and abusive stepfather he took the chance and that's when this infamous video was filmed the video was a bang bus film where the girl picks up guys and fucks them in the van though vitaly couldn't get hard so it was an extremely <laughs> awkward 12 minute video yes i watched all of it yes i was alone yes i had lotion the next year in 2011 vitaly would god I, YouTube that that's an internet classic by the way i remember when that story broke so vitaly used to be massive most of you probably don't remember him now but he was absolutely massive for a time and then one day out of nowhere Someone recognized him in a bang bus video, posted it on Reddit, and it flew. That shit was huge news. Yeah, he basically did start the pranking meta. Well, the fake pranking meta, the one where it's like, gold digger prank. But he like, paid all the actresses and shit. Yeah, he was the one that started that. Man pioneered that, trailblazed. Why couldn't he get hard? I don't know, nervous? I, I, I'm not his penis, I don't know why he couldn't get hard. I have no idea uploading pranks to no avail. It wasn't until June 2nd, 2012 that he'd upload the Miami zombie attack prank. A video where There's Vitaly pretends to be on bath salts scaring the locals. This, in. of course, was a reference to the situation that occurred only a week prior where a man on bath salts bit off a homeless person's face. Kind of a weird thing to base your prank off of, but hey, it was 2012 and I understand it was a different time. The video gained 10 million views in a week and gained Vitaly 70,000 subscribers. This even caught the attention from Daniel Tosh from Tosh. Oh Point my god, Tosh.0. Point 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 oh, and not to mention CNN. So, a guy in, <laughs> Jesus. in Miami, a prankster, decides to go out. Uh, dress up as a zombie mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and covered in blood and he starts running around chasing people look what he does to this guy like you can see the front of his shirt when he turns he's, he's covered in blood and he, he chases this poor guy here and numerous people and they're rolling on it right it's a prank so he chases people around scaring the absolute he's a five gusebs shillian rolled the momentum and kept making prank videos and started becoming the face of youtube pranks along with fousey tube roman atwood dennis rody and several others saying vitaly got into a lot of controversies is an understatement. But I'll tell you guys the biggest ones. In 2014, Vitaly was arrested for streaking the field during the 2014 World Cup final in Brazil. He had natural pressure across his chest. Yeah, Remy Galliard was really kind of the, o the OG. 
R Remy Gallard, I don't remember. He was after climbing the Hollywood sign. Back to our breaking news. A man believed to be a YouTube prankster has climbed the Hollywood sign. Tim Lynn monitoring the situation overhead in Sky 5. Tim. He had a, had a flag, like you said earlier on. It says, I'm back. I don't know where he was before, but apparently he is back. The next month, on <laughs> June 10th, he was again arrested for shrieking during Game 4 of the NBA Finals between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. This time with Trump sucks on his chest and LeBron for president on his back. I don't remember any of these. I only remember his stupid, like, gold digger pranks and shit like that. In 2017, he shrieked at the World Series. He also got banned from attending any sort of sporting event, so he eventually got his girlfriend and his mom to streak for him. I, I guess they really love him. In January of 2020, Vitaly was arrested and spent five days in an Egyptian jail after climbing the pyramids of Giza. Oh yeah, let's raise money. I did this for a good cause. Spread awareness by this beautiful pyramids in Egypt. Egypt. I Man, I didn't remember oh, yeah. any of this and shit about him. What the he fuck? He also started in his own movie with Roman Atwood and Dennis Rohde, which uh, wasn't that great. It was clear to see Vitaly was becoming addicted to the views. As time went on, he became of electric and, sly. and began punishing creators for making edgy content. This was horrible for Vitaly, as it meant he either was out of a job or had to become family friendly. He ended up becoming family friendly and now does toy reviews. Imagine, no, fuck no, no. He instead made an uncensored subscription back. service to see his videos uncensored. But by the looks of it, that didn't go anywhere. Vitaly began losing relevancy as YouTube suppresses content. And in 2020, his name was back in the news, but for something yep. no one expected. In April of 2020, he was- I, I won't say no one expected. This man fell so hard. So even before this story broke, it's, it's about to be when he beat the, beat the woman. Even before that story broke, there were so many videos, so many clips, and so much shit all about how bad he'd gotten. From drugs to all kinds of like different kinds of substance abuse. It, it was bad. Like this was not surprising. But the brutality of it, it caught most people off guard. There's even a video of his arrest. I think it's on Code Blue. Or not Code Blue. I think it's on Police Activity. Later charged for aggravated battery by the Miami Beach Police. Vitaly tackled a female jogger and struck her multiple times on the head and chest. Your boy can stay back there. Oh here it is. Yeah, here's a clip from it. No, put your hand on the car. Put your hand, just lean on the car, please. Lean on the car right there. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. And he seemingly did this for no reason, but it was later revealed that he was on shrooms. No, but mushrooms are good. I never had a bad trip until that one time where I flew. So I was COVID, um, COVID mushrooms. I was bored. Last thing I remember is just, I'm like, please help, please help. And I tried to hug her and she pushed me or whatever. And, and uh, yeah, the fucking that. I hit her and I realized what I was doing on top of her and I was like, what the fuck? And I didn't even run back to the house. The article says, Jesus I Christ, I didn't know what was happening. He was released from custody after a $7,500 bond. Vitaly reunited with his attorney, Roger P. Foley, and released a video on how Roger was able to get him to avoid 15 years in prison. After filing in on the case, the charges were immediately reduced to a felony battery, a third degree felony. And after a few months, the case was reduced to a misdemeanor and eventually dismissed. I feel like if the charges got dropped because you have a really good lawyer, I don't know why you would make a video on it. It kind of seems like a big fuck you to the woman that got attacked like, hey, yeah, that's exactly what it is joke, yeah. i got a good lawyer it's kind of a weird video to make fast forward to 2022 and vitaly seems to be trying to make a comeback to youtube with classics such as can i eat you out how tight are you and epic farting on girls prank someone needs to tell vitaly we're not in 2015 anymore he even does no the, he's What's killing up, it guys intro unironically and it's it's pretty sad. What's up, villains? Welcome to another video. The prank format on YouTube isn't what it used to be. Great examples of new prank channels are Balin Levine, Loaf, Kaisen Nat, Jideon, and the list goes on. But these new era of prank channels Lon, have one thing Leonhardt in common. They all have a lovable main character. With Vitaly, it's going to be hard for him to gain an audience again, especially after being a woman beater. But I guess we'll see what's next for Vitaly. Uh, it should be prison. Tub doesn't go into it, but he beat the shit out of that girl. Man jumped out of a fucking moving vehicle just to beat a random woman who was jogging. Like he should not he should not be out of jail. The guy's a menace. So that's I think it's fucked up. His lawyer got him out of 15 years of prison. What bullshit? Yeah, that guy sucks. 
Thanks to the resub advanced and the bits, Marty. He's probably out of his fucking mind. Yeah, he, he absolutely was. It's no excuse, but yeah, he absolutely was. Because the man's been abusing substances for the better part of like six years now. Yeah, he must have called Saul because that guy worked some magic. Thanks to the resub owner, Twitch. Yo, hold on, guys. Someone's knocking at my door. Thanks to tier one, doctor. A tough hey buddy, skit? You're under arrest. What do you mean I'm under arrest? Because you don't have the new oh, Earl drop. A merch skit. Oh, I thought it was like going to be VPN or you know, something. Earl, the brand you own, the new collection that just dropped. Thanks to Prime Drew. Back to school collection, and if people use code give some back to school, they get 20% off anything at the store. Hey. 20% off really Quazon. Good. Give me that. There you go. Wow, this is really good quality. I'm gonna put it on off camera. Yes, off camera. Yeah, I don't get to see my nipples yet. <laughs> oh my God, it's embroidered. Look at that. Y'all should go to the resub. Nah, Shunky and University. Girus. Isn't that right, cop? That randomly and came fire to my room. Hey, that's very true. My the kids actually test. go to Earl University. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're extremely cute. Hey, what can I say? You are too. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> okay, okay. Guys, make sure to use code back to school to get this How adorable. amazing Earl hoodie, which I will be wearing for the remainder of the video. Earl doesn't exist.com. Let's move on to the next one. Rice gum. The story of Brian Lee is a really God, upsetting one. Jesus. I was a big fan of his in 2016. Back in 2016. How? How? What was there to be a fan of? In 2016, he was still doing the same dumb shit of like diss tracks and saying these kids need to be stopped. He was like, damn, this kid is so cringe. This kid is just lame. What, what, what the fuck was there to be a fan of? The guy hadn't done anything like ever. I I will legitimately never understand how Rice Gum rose to popularity on the platform. Always blew my fucking mind. It was definitely a, a different era. We had YouTubers such as Leafy, Pyrocynical, Grady Underay, Drama Alert, H3H3, iDubs, Filthy Frank, and yes, some of those YouTubers still upload to this day, such as Pyrocynical. Shout out Pyrocynical. If you know me, that's crazy because I look up to you. But we're talking about Ricegum in specific. I made a video dissecting Ricegum's fall off last year, so if you want a more in-depth version of that, you can watch that after this one. Anyway, Ricegum initially blew up off the his doctor. These Kids Must Be Stopped series. A series where he makes fun of cringeworthy kids on the Musical.ly app. I don't know if you guys heard it. This fucker just said, I'll be drunk texting you. I did some research. This fool is 13. The public absolutely loved these videos, and he quickly skyrocketed to 100,000 subscribers. And only four months later, he reached the 1 million subscriber mark. He continued roasting other influencers, and the main thing people Ugh. looked forward to in his videos were Ugh. the diss tracks. Your fans are little kids under the age of 12. Tell me why your ears make you look like an elf. You think I'm trying to roast you, but I'm just trying to help. Psych! I'm just here to give you this L. God, yeah. Now, these so, diss tracks weren't good, even worse but than they I were remember. extremely entertaining at the time. As time went on, dream. he only grew Prime and was becoming Massey. a mainstream YouTuber. It was great seeing this 19-year-old achieve his dreams. But on January 14th, 2017, he uploaded a video which many fans to this day claim was the beginning of his demise. Finally moving out of my mom's house is a video where Ricegum kind of just tells the audience he's moving. He did move, but three months later, he moved again into the Los Angeles Clout House. An influencer house found Oh, by the Clout House. I forgot about that. Alyssa Violet, Summer Rae. Wolfie Raps, FaZe K, and some other forgettable people. And I don't mean that in a mean way, like some people in there were genuinely forgettable. Now, this is where Ricegum's downfall truly began. Not statistically, though. I mean, he peaked in popularity at this house. Bigger videos, better production, more money, more fame, but that all came with a big ego. You see, if there's anything I've learned from doing research of YouTubers rise and fall, or just celebrities rise and falls, it's to never get a big ego. That will just make sure your career dies. But I'm going off track now. Then one day, iDubbbz uploaded a content cop on Ricegum, a video where Ian completely rips Ricegum apart for being an arrogant, money-fueled YouTuber. He is extremely insecure, and he makes it very obvious when he uploads videos like this where he details how much money he earns in a month on YouTube. There's like this video that has been going crazy viral and basically in the video he shows how much money Thanks to the resub buck. paid him. Everyone just giving him so God, much God, this is such a nostalgic trip. He's getting so much street credit. I'm like, 
I, I can't believe it's been too. fucking six Last years. Month, I made a roughly sixty thousand uh, dollars. I mean, it's okay. It is actually my lowest paid month. Once again, I only got twenty million views. I'm not sure what odds he's trying to improve. The odds that uh, a female will finally see him as a suitable sex candidate because he has money, or the odds that his child fan base will revere him more as a god. After this, Brian's videos began receiving a ton no, of dislikes. Now this no. other people is Rice's downfall. I'll Damn. explain later why it wasn't. After this, his content began getting more uh lewd but hey they got views right then he got into this then he tried to make a family channel when he started falling off the family channel didn't work his girlfriends wouldn't stay with him and he just stopped making videos altogether that's where the curtain closes on the rice gum story he tried streaming gta rp but after getting insulted by the chat constantly he eventually called it quits there too i already know his whole fucking story man this guy is just such a fucking l Uh, th he was for a long time my least favorite person on the platform. So I kept up with him, man. I was like a full-blown hate watcher. Thanks to give sub angel. Mystery there is some law. situation where he didn't even apologize. He just pointed fingers and was like, hey, they did it too. There's his YouTube name reaction time. He actually has more subscribers than me. I don't know how because he's not cooler than me. But anyways, he made the same type of video. The same type of video like three months ago. No one said anything. It wasn't a problem. And then all of his scams. But, but kids don't care about getting scammed. Dobrik's crew, whatever. They're influential. Got kid fans. Same thing. Open up boxes. This was three weeks ago. Way before I was doing it. Why did no one bring it up three weeks ago or even talk about these guys? It seems like after this, he just started uploading extremely inconsistently fast forward to 2021 and he became a full-time twitch streamer the last the general public heard from him was when he was beefing with ksi and then with aiden ross which by the way i don't know if that was real or not he's a tier one gaming lived in the same fucking house but quite frankly i don't care enough to look more into that rice yeah i don't know if tub's gonna mention it he might but i have to pee really bad so i want to mention it he also did a lot of scamming towards like the death throes of his channel he did like the, uh, here's 20 Amazon gift cards to make up for my last scam. And if you used any of the codes, they were already used like three years prior. So he just gave like previously used codes. So he scammed on top of a scam. But the scam before that was these uh, like fake loot boxes. Before that was another like fake raffle. So right towards the end of his career, he just started like scamming as much as he could on his way out. Thanks to the 10, damn, thank you to the 10 gift sub size. Oh, save the kids. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, and save the kids. But he was like the most forgettable person in that because by that point he was already completely just out of the public eye. You're right. He was with he was with save the kids. Forgot about that. Twitch tweeted about Kai. I saw. I was actually shocked. I think here's my theory. I think Twitch is now in a position where they feel threatened by YouTube now. So now they're doing everything they can to try and do anything the community has said. I mean, whatever, I mean, I think it's a net positive no matter what, but Twitch just rolled out this terrible elevate, elevated chat thing out of nowhere, which is a terrible idea. It seems like it was so haphazardly thrown together because everyone was upset about their 70-30 uh, split going away. So like, wait, 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 but look, yeah, you're all going back to 50-50, but... Here's an elevated chat functionality, which is more money for you guys. And it's fucking dog shit. So it seems like they're doing everything they can, like hustling and scrambling to try and bring out as much as possible, even when it's not fully realized. But I am glad they finally recognized Kai. It took them long enough. Scum's main channel hasn't seen an upload since 2020, and same with his family holy. channel. He doesn't really tweet or post on Instagram. The times when he's most seen is on his girlfriend's TikTok. But personally, I truly believe that January 14th, 2017, was the beginning he's of Rice Gum's Ed, downfall. Again, not numbers, RKO, wise, but tier one fear and the five gifts of Maki. To LA, Thank you, Maki. You're gonna turn into this clout Appreciate it, Maki. Demon. But if you let the lifestyle consume you, you're night. turning into someone no one wants to support. I really would be interested in seeing Brian <laughs> return to YouTube with a more humble and charismatic attitude, and I'll give him credit he made his bag impossible he even started the entire diss track trend on youtube but his image will always be remembered as the arrogant hype beast who let fame get to his head uh, he's also not right there by the way back when i used to like actively shit on rice gum one of his friends actually reached out to me like an old high school friend and was just telling me stories about this guy i can't corroborate any of them but they were friends like he linked his facebook they were friends in high school he was telling me that Brian was legitimately always a douchebag, but kind of a loner in high school, but still an asshole.
So I, d I don't think it was fame that got to him. This guy was legitimately just born a douchebag. He's the resub Jedi. 60 and certified in the tier 1 Aragon. Aragorn. Carson. Carson King, aka Call Me Carson, is a YouTuber who peaked at 2.9 million subscribers. And ever since the incident, his subscriber count has been trickling down. He began his YouTube journey by uploading Minecraft videos to his first two channels, which were called GamerCraft157 and Icebox Carson, before eventually moving to the Call Me Carson channel. His channel started taking off in 2017 with videos focusing on Discord trolling, reviewing internet media, and playing video games with his friends. The momentum continued, and the official name of his friend group became Lunch Club. It consisted of Call Me Carson, It's Joko, Jay Schlatt, Slimesicle. Holy shit. I don't think I've ever seen Schlatt without the facial hair. What? Is it? Is this? Is this Schlatt? It has to be, right? What? I didn't even know it was possible. I thought this man was literally born with facial hair. God damn. I almost feel like I'm seeing something I'm not supposed to. Taking a peek behind the curtain. God. Oof. I wasn't ready for that. Jason, Hugbox, Travis, Connor Eats Pants, and C Scoop. I hope I pronounced all of those right. I am so used to calling Ted Nevison Ted Nevision, but I get corrected a lot. It seemed like nothing could go wrong for this friend group, and especially the leader, Call Me Carson. But on January 4th, 2021, a video was uploaded to Drama Alert of all places with the title Call Me Carson Serious Allegations Lunch Club Interview. In this video, Lunch Club members Hugbox and you? Travis explained that Carson has been having inappropriate Gebrexen? conversations with underage fans. This included the exchangement of lewd images as well. This information was told to them by Carson himself. That same day, a Twitter user whose information I'll be blurring out said this on Twitter. I can personally come out and say that I've been groomed by Carson. I have talked to many people and never came out about this since now. At the time, I was still 17 and in high school. Here's a few things he said to me. Alright guys, I hate reading words for word especially when they're a little bit uh inappropriate let's let's get into this i'm scared and i want to talk to you for the wrong reasons elaborate what if i only want to talk to you for the sexual part of it i don't want that but like i'm worried Ugh. about it what if subconsciously i'm only talking to you because it turns me on or something is that really what you want what other options are there also what would you want to happen i don't know all i know is every time i jack off now i have a really Ugh. hard time not thinking of you i guess my brain got stimulated and reading anything more, you know Sorry, like any school, sexual yeah, texts are always uh, so fucking cringe crazy next time you're horny we can have some fun again. yeah this whole situation was super we do you know yeah weird like, like the whole 1917 so stuff this is all my fault damn if but then like the people fault, closest to carson said it's more than that so I, this whole thing was you, such a, a weird idea. mess i'm not gonna lie i'm scared of getting your hopes up or something i'm willing to try but it's such a bad idea but so is sexting you fuck Carson later revealed in his Discord that the texts were real. Long story short, when I was 19, I sexted a couple of viewers that were 17. Extremely regrettable and incredibly embarrassing. Felt guilty since. Apologized to them both and resolved it privately last year. Then Keem got a hold of it like two days ago. At the time, the girl was 17 and Carson was 19 years old. Though a two-year age gap isn't anything to glance about. I guess people did because one, this is a famous YouTuber and it's easy to like nitpick anything a famous person does. Two, even though the age of consent in the majority of the United States is 16, talking to people that are under 18 on the internet is like a well-known no-no thing to do, especially if you're famous. And three, people argued that there was a power dynamic, which honestly is something I do agree with. I mean, think about it. If you're a big YouTuber, your fans already see you as a god. So asking them for pictures might just make them feel like they're forced to because they don't want to let down their favorite YouTuber, right? Anyway, Carson lost followers, friends, and basically everything. He stopped uploading, stopped streaming. No, the hurricane missed Tampa tweet. for the most part. whenever he did tweet, he would like quickly delete it. One chili. it was like this for seven months until a video titled Moving Forward was uploaded by him. This specifically was August 25th, 2021. In this video, he doesn't Choco discuss nuts. the situation at all. He says he doesn't want to make more drama and instead promotes the fact that he's going to be donating 100% of his earnings to charity. Hey guys, it's been a while. This isn't going to be your average YouTuber apology video and I'm not going to make it long and drawn out. I've learned a lot this past year. I'm not seeking forgiveness, nor am I looking to make excuses. Thanks, I'm sure machine. some of you are expecting some long drawn out video explaining my truth of the situation, uh, but I have no intentions of doing that. I'd much rather just tell you what I can do in the future. For the next year, I plan to donate 100% of my profits to charity and since that day he's uploaded seven more videos onto his channel and his views clearly don't match to those before the situation so yeah carson is back but with not nearly the same amount of love he once used to have in fact he gets hate i forgot that he was doing that he makes. for the charity yeah, stuff i mean they're definitely trolls that just don't like him but uh i think this is a perfect time to move on
Does right, he? Guys, I'm gonna give a quick update to the whole call me Carson. Oh, well, I actually might answer the question I'm about to ask. The situation, as you guys know, there's been a bunch of Twitch drama recently, and Hugbox actually wanted to add on to that. I won't say it like that, but I'll just say he did add on to the drama, though I didn't see Maybe anyone talk about frog, this. Um, seabird, just Nihau, happened to stumble across Matt. it while doing my research. So here's Hugbox's Twitter, and Hugbox actually made a twit longer uh, with the title Game Over. This got, it got almost 5,000 likes. Like, I would say it got, it got some attraction. I have no idea how I did not hear about this at all. But the tweet longer is a, it's a lengthy read. It's a very lengthy read. But uh, I'll just give you guys uh, the important sentences. I'm going to try to explain the relevant events of the last couple years in the most concise way possible. This was always written off as drama when I try to talk about it. But I only spoke of it because it really bothered me and I cared. It's not easy to be threatened with legal action when you're just trying to tell people what's going down. That's why my tweets were always so cryptic. I'm not a clout chaser. I haven't even made money over the last several years. Only alienated my audience since I started talking about this stuff. And at this point, want absolutely nothing to do with the internet. We'll start with the Carson thing. I, found I out read this and this guy tries to make this whole thing about himself. I vaguely heard about this. I will say off rip. Him saying I'm not a clout chaser, but calling this game over is kind of contradictory. Uh, that, that just immediately rubs me the wrong way started talking about this stuff and at this point want absolutely nothing to do with the internet we'll start with the carson thing i found out about what he did in march 2020 and for a moment considered tweeting it right then and there unfortunately i did not have any concrete details initially in fact the few details i had were lies the group had a meeting later that day which our manager ryan told us that he had dealt with this several times before and we can make this go away and some members of the group insisted that we needed to stick by carson at this point i was checked out completely but naively was shocked that so many people seemed to value their Careers saucy over, and the right feeling thing. It. over the next several months, I started asking around as to what others had been told and found out that every single person was told an entirely different story as to how many girls he was contacting and what their ages were. This pushed me to do something. And I had actually gotten the entire group to agree to recording a video of each of us simply saying what we were told and uploading it directly to the Lunch Club channel. No baseless accusations, no clout chasing, just the truth. At the last moment, many pulled out of the video because in Schlatt's words, he had too much to lose. Deja vu. It was never supposed to go through Keemstar. I'm going to skip this paragraph again you guys can just go to hugbox's twitter to read the whole thing because it is a lot carson had a whole discord of content creators that aided him in strategizing and controlling the lead up to the drama alert because naturally ryan had gone behind my back warned him and tried to prep him i know this because not all of them suck and they told me what was up then the creators in that discord fled like rats from a sinking ship when it was clear the situation was not salvageable i called carson several times in the days leading up to the drama alert because i did not want the venue to discredit the story and i wanted him to take responsibility for his actions like a fucking adult to this day he hasn't even admitted to what he did and everyone still thinks it was a two-year age gap that is not true so if we go to the responses on the tweet we get stuff like this He's i like how instead moon. of telling us why it was worse than a two-year age gap he simply did oh, it that's rough him. Elaborate on that. I hear that, Lamont. No. It's a very strange twit longer because, I mean, he's being cryptid, like he said, but he says something about legal action, so I don't know. I don't know that. I'm just I'm just the messenger. I want to make that clear. I'm just the messenger and i just felt like i should update you guys since something else came through to the story it's very odd that hugbox says that there wasn't a two-year age gap it was that that was not it but yet this girl says that she's 17 but i also remembered apparently there were multiple girls i don't know it's very weird what i'm telling you guys is not factual again just the message yeah this shit yeah, is so fucking uh, messy what i guess now we're actually going to talk about another youtuber you know because we're continuing the video shout out to finance of freddy's t-shirt but yeah Let's I don't, get on to the next person on the list. I don't know much about Hugbox. So what was he saying? What was Hugbox saying then? I Now I'm just left really fucking confused. Thanks for the bits vintage. Yeah, I haven't seen too much from it though, Vintage. Not since the, we first looked at it. But I am keeping my eye on it. So not a... Wasn't a whole lot of new stuff in the twit longer. Okay. Alright. Okay. Phase K and Phase Jarvis. Phase oh, Glenn these are huge. Faze Jarvis posted a video cheating in Fortnite. He was like, I'm trying out a name button Fortnite for content. Got permabanned. Cried. 
Phase K, save the kids. Kicked out of phase, cried. And then began as a Call of Duty sniping team. Members would achieve impressive clips only using sniper rifles and later create montages which would be uploaded onto YouTube. When FaZe Clan started out, they were all just kids in high school enjoying the most played game at the time. By 2012, the YouTube channel had hit a million subscribers and it was the thing to know about ball. FaZe Clan if you played Call of Duty. Everyone and their mom wanted to join FaZe Clan at one point. I I wanted to join FaZe. 2014 to 2016 These are so dirty. is when I would say FaZe truly peaked. This was when the main members of FaZe all moved into a house in New York and called that the FaZe House. Many fans still say this was the best era to be a fan of FaZe. And FaZe hasn't stopped growing at all. They even have esports teams in every major video game. They also recruit athletes, and not to mention that their main focus is still Call of Duty, with members such as Swag. Is that their main focus? Call of Duty. Also, I can't nah, they're much bigger than that now. The best member, Face Jev. Yo, Jev, if you're watching this, I just want to let you know you're <laughs> a huge inspiration to me, and thank you so much for always being you. Anyway, let's first talk about Face K, who joined Face in 2013. This was thanks to his sniping skills. He would upload gaming content and occasionally have his younger brother Jarvis join in on videos. What's going on, guys? This is Face K. And I'm doing a Q&A today. I asked some of you guys on Twitter to ask questions to ask my brother, who is here next to me. Though K never got nearly as many views as his American peers, I'll give him credit for going outside the box and attempting to capture the more IRL side of gamers. And when he would get views, it was for very out of place content like uh, water bottle flip videos. You'd Huge. never expect that to be uploaded by Damn, Facebook. he did a lot of that. I mean, they brought in views, so he was doing something right. Around this time is when his younger brother Jarvis began uploading content of his own, but things would change in 2018 around Fortnite's peak. K would begin to make videos revolving around his little brother and Fortnite. The views were immense, and at this point, K was living in a new LA phase house. Or the clout house. Either way, it was a fucking influencer house. Eventually, thanks to his skills and very, very saturated thumbnails, Jarvis joined the one and only FaZe Clan in 2019. The momentum only nice. continued. And then Jarvis got banned from playing Fortnite Aww. due to using hacks in the game, aimbot to be specific. He wasn't playing competitively. He just downloaded some mods and uh, wanted to make a cool video out of it. I'm truly, like, so sorry. Epic, I know I have to take accountability for my actions. And, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to accept any punishment, like, comes my way whatever happens epic games decided to make an example out of him and banned him from he's still banned game. right no this doesn't mean that when he goes to his friend's house and picks up the controller the fbi just breaks down the fucking door and arrests him. Spicy. it just meant that if you There's make any Quincy. new accounts publicly yeah. they would all just automatically get banned <laughs> this also meant Rough. jarvis had to switch content he basically became it's just such a stupid idea doing like i i don't remember how old he was when he did it i think he was probably like 18 or something but what a dumb fucking idea. I'm going to knowingly cheat in this game for a video. Like, I don't know what you would possibly expect to happen from that. It's so... Like, I feel, like, almost bad. Because to be so stupid to think it's a good idea, like, it's... I don't know. Still, very, very dumb. Challenges and TikTok life hacks. By the way, these thumbnails are still, uh... Very wolf. bright. In 2020, he quote unquote fooled the internet that he was playing Fortnite again. He went live and had someone else play for him. Then his username got leaked and Epic Games banned him on the spot. But when did FaZe K and FaZe Jarvis's careers go to shit? Kids. The Save the Kids crypto scam. Yeah. Remember when was hopping onto the crypto coin. Fa uh, save the kids. Train? Well, this was one of them. This was a coin that claimed it would be used for charity and use the likes of K, Jarvis, Tico, Ricegum, and Nikon in order to get more clout. This was an entire mess, and I'm going to dumb it down for you guys, but if you guys want full explanation, make sure to go watch CopyZilla's video. It's an amazing detailed video. That is a but great yeah, video down, on it. Fans would buy this coin thinking that the value was only going to go up. You know, they probably thought it was going to be the next Bitcoin, but instead, the owners of the coin just left with all the money i believe this is called a pump and dump scam all the people in it got rugged part of it except tico tico was genuinely innocent which is why he's back in phase now but everyone else in that video yeah they got a lot of money from the fans that were trying to support this charity due to this k was kicked from phase and jarvis nikon and tico were suspended until further notice he's he's some tacos well he's rice gum he wasn't a part of like any team or anything. he just himself so this is where k's career started going downhill i mean why wouldn't it who wants to support a scammer then k came out saying that the mastermind behind all of this was sam pepper yeah the dude with black ops 3 dark matter for hair this response wasn't really taken that well and his views did right probably really was sam well, pepper but you're also this, a fucking idiot for doing anything with sam pepper it's your it's your fault how sam pepper still somehow infiltrates anything blows my fucking mind he's like the most well-known scammer of all time
Thanks for, hey, thanks again, Maki. Thanks for five gift subs. And the tier one climate and the resub chaser and SSB. I thought I got the wrong channel. I thought I put Jarvis's channel instead of K's. But notice how much K uses his brother in his thumbnails. Like, do you not think you have a photogenic face? I literally thought this was Jarvis's channel. I was like, okay, I got to re screenshot it. No, this is K's channel. I did not make a mistake. Again. Please Jesus. stop the oversaturated thumbnails. Jarvis had a boxing match, which he won, and he was back in FaZe. Then this video was uploaded. Why I left FaZe Clan. <laughs> where he explains that he left FaZe Clan because his big brother was kicked. It's weird for me because I don't want to be a part of FaZe if, like, you're not in FaZe as well. Oh, that's so wholesome. Awesome. Me and you, we, um, we started YouTube since the very beginning. Trust. <laughs> All of this happened because of you and you pushing me to, like, make videos. Start vlogging, you, some you know, start beaches and the recent really Duluth. will happen because some Claire. you push me to do it. Aww, and tier 1 so swoosh sweet. and Tier Except 1 Carla. not really, because this is when Jarvis would begin uploading less frequently and get less views. And no, YouTube shorts don't count because those views are from randoms, not your fans. I forgot to mention that they have another channel called Jarvis and K. Oh, nice. They do upload more frequently, but the views aren't there either. And for some reason, while watching their videos, I feel like they're always finding a way to diss FaZe. Seven months ago, I left FaZe Clan. And after watching these TikToks, I think I made the right decision. It's like, I, I get the vibe of like biting the hand that fed you. I mean, even the Maybe fans Fisto. dislike the videos. And it's very, it's very weird. I don't know. It seems like they have a big ego after leaving FaZe. I truly believe Drivers could have saved his career by just staying in FaZe. It doesn't matter if you were banned from Fortnite. There's new Call of Duties every year to make content on. I get that family comes first and that's super respectable that he did that. But read- What is K doing? I know he showed his channel, but is that really all he's doing? Yep. That's really all he's doing. He legitimately does just use his brother in every single thumbnail. I would have no idea this is Kay's channel. Legitimately. There is nothing here that tells me this is uh, FaZe Kay's channel. That's crazy. But man, this content does look fire. <laughs> awesome. I asked her to be my girlfriend on camera. Whoa. I exposed Jarvis playing Fortnite? Oh, no. And what is Jarvis doing? Maybe Jarvis only has K in the thumbnail. That'd be huge. No, I guess not. He also hasn't fallen off nearly as hard. Yeah, it's mainly just K. So Jarvis has two channels? Well, yeah. Jarvis and K have two channels. They have their own, and then they have the FaZe and Jarvis channel. Or the K and Jarvis channel. Joining phase doesn't mean fuck you, bro, to your brother. It just Thanks means you're looking out fist. for yourself. It's quite literally your livelihood. Nowadays, That's a good question, they both fist. upload I don't shorts know. and Mr. Beast inspired videos, but it doesn't seem their audience is there anymore. Jarvis had a video get over a million views recently, but it's because phase members are in it. Pretty, pretty ironic. I mean, you could have stayed. You could have fucking stayed in the group. But yeah, let's head on to the next one. Kiwis. Kiwis first started getting oh, popular in 2014, I forgot about this one. 2015 when he was part of the Call of Duty team Red Reserve. This team was seen as a stepping stone to FaZe Clan. During this time, the Red House became a thing, and this included Formula, Random, Who? Mix, Kiwis, oh, man. Game Gandhi. Since Crazy, no one remembers Red, this. I mention Red's best member, Game Gandhi. He was always the best person out of their crew, and he had the best content, and it just sucks that he got grouped with these... I won't spoil it. I'll let Tub explain. This life of its own. Like the chemistry, it's pretty was bad though. The Gandhi vlogs were sweet and to the point. They weren't seen as ripoff phase anymore. They were just becoming red until one day in 2016, Keemstar uploaded a video where Kiwi's attempts to justify why he sent a 12-year-old girl images while he was 17, and that had started a year and a half before the interview. So now the girl was 14 and he was 19. Either way, it's fucking disgusting. And then he proceeds to shoot himself in the foot because okay, so it, you it's sent, just, it was you just sent, weird. You sent pictures when. You were 17 and she was 12. Now, I believe she said that she you said she was 14. I believe and the kick logs will the kick logs will prove it. Like if you guys Ugh. get it, like okay, it's there. but she like, said she was 14 or whatever. But I bu but it she was, was a month ago. Yeah, and a month ago on Snapchat, yes. Okay, so a month ago you sent her a picture. Yes. But oh the my problem God. with that is you're 19 <laughs> and she's 14 at the time. But the th the thing like. I was in Eek. a really like depressed Eek. state. Like I, she was yep. talking to me. Like yep. she kept on saying how she, she, like she was saying how she was so attached to me. And I, I was saying, and she said how she wanted to meet up. And I said that's really weird. I don't want to meet up. Like that's something you can't bank on. Like that's just really weird. I I don't want to do that. 
and she's 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 claimed that she wants to meet up with other people. There's there's another person in red that she talks to that she wanted oh. to meet up with. Um, specifically, and we can talk more about that in private. But oddly enough, this wasn't the end of his career. He continued uploading and even uploaded a response video where he flat out victim blames the girl. I shouldn't have trusted this girl. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I, I don't know why I did what I did. She she convinced me that I could trust her and it, it uh. was a mistake. And that's something I will never make ever again. This girl lied about her age and convinced me to send her pictures of myself. Like she sent pictures to me too, but his audience seems to oh, have liked and supported him. By this time, everyone knew about the situation. What? And due to living I, I, I never saw that. This man's just out here confessing to full-blown crimes without knowing it. Thanks to the some Helicity, Waifu, and Jay. I only knew that first part. So the dude straight up like admits like, eh, I thought she was 14, so I sent her all these all these nudies. Yeah, I, that's why I was, you know, being romantically involved with a 14-year-old. I, I didn't know she was 12. She fucking lied to me. Can you believe that? that? That bitch. I didn't know he even made a response video where he just like straight confirms it and then makes it clear that he also received child porn. Yikes. In the Red House, the address was public. I don't know if they publicized it themselves. I'm sure they wouldn't dox themselves so fans could come over and say hi, but their address was known. Anyway, Kiwis got confronted at his own house by a random person, but it was done horribly. The person called them a... Like, the dude filming could have at least had some factual stuff instead of just saying that he's a... <laughs> red formula. Yeah, the leader up, of the Red Reserve. What's, up, man? How's <laughs> what's good, doing? man? How you doing, man? What's good? Uh, you a fan? Yeah, I'm a fan of the Red Reserve. <laughs> is Kiwis around? Yeah, he is. Uh, uh, do you wanna... think I could talk to him? Yeah, sure. Uh, you wanna, you wanna come on in for a bit? Yeah, sure. What? Red uh, Kiwis. Oh, hey, DJ Kitty Mac. Yeah, Under what's up? Life, the man with the big shorts. <laughs> yeah, what's up, dude? Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Okay. Why did you f that girl? Oh, uh, you think you're funny? <laughs> Yes. Right. That is not funny at all, dude. Alright, you gotta leave me. <laughs> you gotta get out of the house. What, 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 why did you do you it? You gotta get out of the house. Why, why would they invite this guy in? Yeah, I know the whole story. Get out, get out of the why did you do it? Why did you do it? You sent your dick online. Yeah, to a girl hey, that, was four, don't touch him. that was keep 14 years old. The door for that was 14 years old. Do you realize Do you not understand that she completely lied about her age? Get out of the house. It's proven. Get out of the fucking house. That's why I'm here. The reason why Kiwi's story is so odd is because he never stopped uploading. Why the fuck? How dumb is that whole house? What? Is everyone in that house just an actual fucking idiot? It's so fake. Uh, I don't know, man. It may be. I, I choose to believe that over them being that fucking stupid. I don't see why it would be fake, though, because then that once again just puts it in the public eye that this dude was sexting a child. Sending and receiving pictures from a child. So why would they try and make a fake video about it? Like, that seems like a terrible idea. Crazy. He even peaked in 2018, two years after that situation. This was, of course, with the help of overly saturated Fortnite thumbnails. Yay! Fast forward to 2021, and skipping over his new team, which failed, Drummler uploaded a Aww. documentary about him, and he got dislikes for a little bit, but kept uploading. His views nowadays are nowhere near his peak, and it's just sad, really. Seeing when YouTubers ruin their careers, but don't have anywhere else to go because they make their money on the internet. I mean, they could go work at their local food for less, but I think at that point, of being a YouTuber, your ego's really high, so you just don't want to do that. And there's a chance you could get recognized, which is always gonna be awkward. We're literally watching these people die inside. But yeah. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I just wanna say I don't condone the harassment of any of these people. I don't want my subscribers to be those subscribers that go to these pages and leave hate comments. Don't do that. Let's just, just watch from the sidelines, chill out. But looking at all these names, I would the only person I would say really didn't do anything wrong, just made like a, I guess a, bad decision was Jarvis. I don't think he did anything to get canceled for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his was very stupid. He cheated in a game and the game happened to be his cash cow. I agree. Out of everyone on this list, Jarvis was like the most like trivial, the, the most innocent. He cheated in Fortnite because he's a fucking idiot and he got banned for it, which cost him like his, his career as a, as a Fortnite creator, but he's still doing fine. Oh, actually, no, he was in Save the Kids. Actually, I forgot. I actually totally forgot he was in Save the Kids. Never mind.
<laughs> I actually, it's crazy. Every time I hear Save the Kids, I only think of Phase K. Yeah, never mind. I totally forgot that he was also part of Save the Kids. Fortnite, and uh, he chose his brother over Phase Clan, which I think was the wrong decision. Yeah, I just wanted to make that clear. Leave a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and make sure to go to EarlDoesn'tExist.com to get yourself some new Earl clothing and use code Back to School. Is for, I don't even know how much percent off. It's on high on. Yeah, music video coming out soon. The name of that song is Overdose, and that'll be part of my nine to ten track EP. There will be a whole movie on this channel, so I can't wait for you guys to see that. I'm so excited. Sorry for missing an upload. I was recording the music video for that, so follow me on TikTok. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. All the ads were right there. Specifically TikTok. Like Next I hate when I pop up on people's YouTube page and they're like, "Oh my God, you have a yes, I have, a, I have all social medias, bro." He's but, using Ludd and Schlatt's music. Gotta I'm gonna go have sex with your mom, and I'll see you guys and next time. I upload. You're right, actually. That was wasn't that. Yeah, this is eight hours old, so I actually think that was Ludd and Schlatt's music emporium. So is Kiwis still uploading? Holy fuck. I got you. Yeah, that's further evidence. Unless you're like literally thrown in jail. If you just ignore it and keep posting, you'll be alright. God damn. He doesn't get nearly the views he used to, but I mean that's still enough to make a make a living off of. What about Mini Lad? Yeah, his is the same deal. We we already talked about that one. He doesn't get the views he used to, but still enough to make a living. Oh, sure to smash that like button. Thumbs up, ring the bell. Tell your mom I said hi.